Betty Dixon, Diana Podowitz, Nancy Glurry. Diana has a fun fact for us tonight. Well, you might already know this because I know you all read the voice front to back and upside down and inside out too. But the Animal Welfare League just got a twenty-five thousand. Right. Yeah. 
and possible conflicts with you. Have you been out to Madera's garden? Yes, I have. Okay, just take that and knock it down to 17, 20 lots instead of 47. Now, are these, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. It's too late at night. Um, so are you taking bids on different contractors that already built here, or is it uh, one contractor uh, from the guild? You don't know. I don't know. You don't know if you know the area? We don't know the area. We don't know. The we area. Don't know. Yeah. Because see, if we knew the area, then maybe too many people would know the area, because we may not have acquired all the lots. You know, the area gets, we have Renee Hagen, who works in our land acquisition, and we have the 3,000 
I would like to say I am very pleased that these are not pocket homes, that they're regular homes, and they sound like sounds like it's going to be a nice development, and that's really good to hear. Um, has there been any kind of an update on the hotel? Are, are we any further? Yeah. <laughs> we, we wish. We wish. We wish to know. No. no. I just wonder if you could no, we don't know where it's going to be yet. We don't We're not even, it's not even not being pursued it's at not all. Being, being that's not true. Leslie was contracted to, uh, asked to come August up with something August. by August. Right. Mm -hmm. So it right. is being pursued by Leslie and gathering information to it's present a, to the board. A, it's a goal. But it's, it's one of those where you're kind of trying to find a developer that wants to come in and here and do something. Right. It's a goal. But it's, it's one of those where you're, you try to find a developer that wants to come in here and run it, pay for it, everything else. It, it's, it's yes. But it's not it's not a dead in the water. Thing. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, it's something she's supposed to present. But um, you know, if she so found we someone or not. We don't have anybody out there with the the knocking on the door, telling us they got the money to build it and run it. And that's what we've been looking for. Now. Right. Can I say one more thing? Um, I'm really pleased, Nancy, that you said that if someone didn't have, you know, sometimes we sign up for these a month ahead. Or even more, you can. You can sign up for them way ahead. And we may not really know what we're going to ask. But I understand why if if we can give you something that does give you know, you can look up the information because I mean you guys are smart, but you can't know if this is a big association. Well, like like <laughs> Sam asked She's when we walked in the door something. and he said, What in the world are you doing with all that stuff? Yeah. And, and, right. he, and then he said, Do you know what the questions are? And I, I, I mean, we have an idea, but we don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm taking the stance. If I don't know, then I can get back to it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And we will get to everybody tonight. I mean, right. there's not that many people here. Uh, Joe's not here, is it? No, he had to stay home. Okay. Uh, and he, his, his uh, topic, and it's not really a question, folks. It's a topic. And so we, we just can have an idea of maybe what's currently going around. His uh, question, topic, was HSDPOA. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, whatever you want to answer. That, that covers a lot. That covers a lot. You want to know what he wants to ask? Um, yeah. He didn't express that to me. So. All right. Okay. okay. Is Mary here? And I can't even begin to pronounce you. You can? Mary, <laughs> <laughs> would you pronounce your last name? Shepanya. Thank you. And she's a TBD. Right. To be determined. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, well. okay, we're prepared for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, since I'm early in the list, uh, one thing I would like to know is why are we coming up with this idea of this neighborhood, this pocket neighborhood, and why? Are we seeking out a different developer? And in the beginning of, of the village, did John Cooper, because there's pocket neighborhoods all over this community um, mm -hmm. where, you know, there's small clusters of, of houses in a given, given area. They're everywhere, particularly on the west side. And uh, so, so my question is, why are we, as a homeowners association, a property owners association, going out and seeking out other developers to come up with a plan that we are implementing? Huh? Can I take? Sure. Okay. John Cooper, Cooper Communities, is our developer. Right. I've always been our developer. Right. But Cooper Community Homes no longer has a presence here. A large presence here. They don't have a team to be building large groups of homes here. If they wanted to mm -hmm. to do what we're attempting to do with another or other builders, mm -hmm. they would be more than welcome to be part of the to be part of it. Why don't we talk to them? We yeah. are, we yeah. are yeah. trying to okay. We actually talked with John and Joey this morning. We, okay. we have reestablished relationships there. We had a very good relationship. Let me, let me, let, let me finish answering your question, and we can discuss that a little bit if y'all would like to, for us to discuss that. 
But so so any any anybody that's in the building business is welcome to come here and say, hey, you know, I've got a group of house plans here. Because usually what builders do, and I, this is just what I've educated myself since getting on the board, is they'll have, you can, I can go around on the golf courses and see homes that were built by the builder that burnt, built my first home that I lived in in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Jimmy Bates home and they're all over the village in mm -hmm. various places. So what they usually do is they have three, four, five, different house plans, right. that's what they do. Right. Because they have their economy of scale and that's how they, they can make their money because they know, you know, pricing wise and everything, mm -hmm. how they do that, they get the drawings right. for them and that's all they do. So <clears throat> anybody that's in the building business, you can pick up the, uh, the um, um, carriage homes, same way, mm -hmm. same type of thing. You can see the roof lines and you mm -hmm. can figure that they were carriage homes. So anybody is welcome to get into this. This is not an exclusive club or anything. Well, I think it's really interesting because because there's a house down the street from me that I perceive to be very similar to my house. Mm -hmm. But it's like one on the, this whole big area, you know, and all these other houses are all very different. And, and if you put like a cluster of houses, <coughs> as you see in the townhouse communities, you've got a cluster of houses that are all similar mm -hmm. and look the same. And is that what we really want as opposed to... These nests won't necessarily be all the These same. They can be customized. I know when I drive through Madeiras, they all look the same. Yeah. Well, but that's a, that is, you know, we use the word townhouse here because we've been using that since all Those are townhouses. No, no, no. The smaller no, no. houses. Like no, I understand that. that. But, but that concept, the, the townhouse type concept, and that, that's what that has trickled into out at Madeira's Gardens. Mm -hmm. It's like that because their association fee, they pay it into an organization called the Villas, to, you know, because they don't have any maintenance there. That's all through Cooper. That's all through CCI. Okay. Because they're not part of the Townhouse Association. Right. Even though they operate under kind of the Townhouse concept. Okay, gotcha. So that's why they're built that way. You just like the Vino Courts, they're not part of the Townhouse Association. No, no they're, Cooper. they're Coopers. They're Coopers. Uh, and, and you can go through the village and see Cooper houses. Yeah, time. yeah. You, right. you can recognize a Cooper house. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. um, and we've had many other developers in the in the village for uh, years. One one thing too, it's, it, 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 we have a, a builder, house builder, contractor named Jay Allen. Jay Allen goes into the BLA and negotiates prices on, what, 12, 15 lots at a time? Usually at a time, yeah. And then, but they're not all next door to each other. Mm -hmm. But he has like six or seven plans of a house that he submitted to the ACC. And see, that would be logical to me. Hold on. Okay. But <laughs> this is going to be the same thing because what they're doing, they are buying lots that the DOA needs to sell. So you're not, but I understood you to say that they were lots all in a thing. They, they are. They grew. But, but you know, they are. You know, they these are all the these, same. These, these, the these are, but this, this, the different contractors, like Mr. Cooper, they have their own plumbers, their own electricians, and all right. that. And that, I don't call him a developer. I mean, he is a contractor, a house builder. Carriage Homes is not a developer, and they're the ones that have built like 10 or 11. He's 11. saying he doesn't call J. Allen developer. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. He's a builder. He's yeah. a builder. So the bottom line for a pocket neighborhood is to sell POA lots, right? POA owned lots. Well, right. if we have a group of lots in an area, and maybe maybe there's a few lots within that area that aren't ours. Then we're going to today, Hagen would you know try to trade for those or whatever so that we can have a cohesive area to sell to. I think to, to answer your question though, that we wouldn't. I don't believe anybody would turn down another another no, builder no. if they wanted to build to do the same a pocket thing. neighborhood or a subdivision if they wanted to buy all of the lots that they could in an area. It doesn't have to be our lots because the main point of all of this is adding 
to more people that pay assessments right. Right. And, and use the amenities fees. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, Nancy, does the uh, COA make a contract with those in the guild? And is the a certain percentage that goes to the POA for them to work with them? The, there are special deals now as far as a contract and a percentage that we get. Mm -hmm. We're looking to get rooftops and revenue from assessments and amenity fees over a we're long period of time. It's just It's not like we're going to build a pocket neighborhood and realize millions of dollars. It, we're it's over a period of with time. This subdivision that we're going into from everything that we've seen is that somebody's going to come in here buy the lots from us so we get the revenue from the lot sale and then they build the houses as they see fit and they sell them do whatever they want to sell them through well the, uh, the next question would be uh, I've never seen the POA advertise lots for sale per se if they you could put it up on the website and say here's what we have or they're in the MLS. They're in the They're in the MLS. Mm -hmm. Well, they do come up on Zillow. Yes. Yeah. They'll come up on Zillow. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'd say that probably we're using more digital advertising than we are print advertising because it's more cost effective. Mm -hmm. But they're out there. Oh, I know they're out there, but I can never understand who owns them. Sometimes you go through. Well, sometimes we don't know who owns them either. That's why Renee has a job. <laughs> Sometimes they're sold, they're sold, they're, uh, they've defaulted on taxes and the Arkansas State Commissioner on Lands sells them. And we have no clue until they say, hey, I bought a house, what is this, what do you want, what? <laughs> yeah, we had, a, we, had a gal, we had a gal recently contact us because she had bought a lot through the Arkansas Land Commission. And when that transaction takes place, the Arkansas Land Commission notifies us that Betty Sue bought a lot from us. And then we send out some paperwork and we send it to the, to the address that, of record from the Arkansas uh, Commission on Land. To the address of the lot she bought. Well, no, we send it to the address because that lot doesn't have a mailbox. Right. So we send it certified mail to that to their address of record that they give when they make the purchase, when they do the purchasing agreement with them. And and she called and said, I can't get my. Uh, she emailed and I, she couldn't get a certified letter because she worked and da 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 da. da. Could they give her this stuff electronically? And you know, she contacted every board member about it and. Um, you know, so these are going on, going on all the time. But let me share with you. A, maybe, maybe I can clear up this lot situation. I'm not clear it up, but explain a little piece of this. What we're facing with this lot situation, based upon something that Liz, our chief financial officer, was sharing with me. We will have these lots that are in default and haven't paid their assessments, and all of a sudden, a check will come in, and it'll be for lot box addition number da 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 and it'll clear that all up and that lot will then be free and clear then shortly thereafter paperwork will come through that that lot now the deed is to be given to Bobby and Annie over here well Bobby and Annie have probably been paying somebody vis-a-vis -vis through NRPI all these years okay but NRPI, what they've done is they've like, okay, they'll send a notice out to, to Bobby and Annie and say, quit sending your check to this address and this name, and now make your check payable to this address. So we have all these shell companies that they've been, one will go bankrupt and go out of business and another one comes in. So tracking some of the deeds on these lots. And then we need, the other situation we have is this example. Mom and Dad come down here in 1972 and buy a lot. They've been paying on it, no problem. They don't want it anymore, so they give it to my brother. Yeah, he's using he he, he, he he thinks he'd like to come here someday, so he keeps paying on it, and he's been paying on it. Well, then he dies, and his kids get it. Well, no one has ever changed the name on the deed on this lot, and not himself. <coughs> So we have to 
that that lot of work to go to Lots of digging and things when it comes to title work. Mm -hmm. And you ask why? We need the rooftops because we need the revenue. Yeah, that I, I get. Yeah, totally get that. All right. All right. Um, Vicki? Yes. Vicki? Vicki. Hi, Vicki. <laughs> There's Vicki. Vicki uh, Vicky wanted just a couple of comments and one point of clarification about <laughs> topics right. discussed at the 626 list. Well, my first comment would be, or question, I guess, would be, why has that never been posted? The video of that let's talk has never been posted. I don't know. I asked Larry. Larry has turned it over to our IT department. I I never looked at it again, but I will find out about that. We, we already have I've got to know to find out about it. Okay. Well, I have no idea why it hasn't been posted. It was the library. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and my original question was going to be based on watching that again because. I wanted to ask something at the time that someone had commented about that I thought was incorrect. So, do you know what you can you can give up? Uh, no, I can't because I don't know who the person was, oh, and I'm okay. certainly not going to say this person said something that was wrong. Well, I'm you not can say sure what was said. We don't have to make sure. What do you need clarification, clarification on the point that was made to see if we could yeah. correct something? So was it a topic that we need to clarify for you? Uh, yes, as soon as I watch the video. Okay. I okay. have another question. Uh, no, that was my only real question. Okay. Okay. What day was it? Pardon? What day? It was June the 26th. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. The, the previous. Last month's well, last month. Yeah. They didn't want to post it because Torment was in it. Here? I didn't see her. 
plan to return to head up the event while bringing some of the village staff and volunteers. This was decided before she was on the payroll. My question is, will the POA be covering expenses such as lodging, food, and travel? And will there be any expense at all from this operation? They have some very dear friends here. Yeah. In fact, that's how they found the village. Right. Um, and and he's, they said, gee, we'd love to move to the village, but I gotta get a job. And so there was a job. And she, she interviewed for it. She came back a couple of times uh, before she got the job, and she was one of several that were interviewing for that job. And so she and her husband, who uh, is a retired police officer, motorcycle supervisor unit kind of thing, I, I can't, that's, don't, you know, don't go to him and say that that's what he does. No, <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, but, um, and they have a son who's, uh, who's disabled, but that's with them also. Um, that was her very first ever report, and she'd been what, three weeks at that point, something like that actually on the job three weeks. So she barely probably had met everyone that was for direct charge. The board has not received any travel requests okay. or anything along that nature. So if we people, wouldn't. We, and we wouldn't because that's part of operations. But we have not seen anything on the calendar about anybody going to be gone okay. to go to this festival. But I had the same concern that you did. But um, you probably pulled it up the same place I did on their website out in Colorado. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. where I got it. It's all the same thing. But I mean, if somebody wants to take vacation time and oh, right. go out and do that, they're they're more than welcome right. to it. But I certainly would. I I I mean, I I hear your pain. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask the question to the right now. person. That's. I will go to uh, Leslie or so someone and ask the question. That's yes. where you need to go. So operations and right. ask the question. You know, th there is budgeted dollars though for, I'm going to call it the <coughs> promotion, continuing education, whatever you marketing, want to call it. but marketing, but there's there's budgeted dollars for right. that type of travel. Okay. So I mean, you know, you, you can't get real upset because it is something that um, that we've approved as board already. I hate to think we're going to Colorado and spending money when we go down yeah. to Texas and bring, bring out a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, a lot of people from Colorado here, too. Well, they're yeah. not something. I realize, yeah, but that isn't a heavy market. Let me ask just one second. Was the second part of your question about the bike? And yeah, well, it was. I, just was I think what we had on this uh, uh, this position, <laughs> I was wanting to know this, uh, this uh, CMEO position that she was filling. That was part of the CMP, probably too, where they're saying we need that kind of a position in the village, right? Mm -hmm. So this building, village has been building on the CMP, I would say, quite frankly, from Waypoint to Grove Park, all that concept, even though it wasn't maybe in writing yet, that's all part of this whole program. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the bike and golf uh, cart uh, survey, I answered that when I got done. I didn't mean to send it. I, sent it. I thought it was one of the worst surveys I've ever seen put out. If you look at that and, and, and take it for what they're asking, do you want wider, wider shoulders for your golf cart on the ropes? Do you want cart paths for golf carts? Do you want wider shoulders for a bike? We can't even do anything at the Balboa Golf Course and we have a committee putting out something like that. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. I know, I know that 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 doesn't. But you got to start somewhere, right? Um, Not it's, it's, money. it's golf, yeah, but it's, it's community engagement. Okay, that's what it is. Is that how do we know until it's too late what you folks want if they don't do stuff like this? Okay, we're not going to run right out and put a third lane on the soil, maybe because we can't afford it. We the property on and on and on. So just because a survey went out doesn't mean that we're really spending any money on it. But we got to start somewhere, right? We we got to get the information from what the residents want. Um, this was kind of kind of disappointing. And the, the the very first question was like 147 responded. Right. I mean, obviously road biking is more more uh, important than mountain biking. That was kind of the outcome. People would love to be able to drive their golf carts around. 
but they probably are going to get killed. Yeah. Uh, what is yeah. it? Um, and there's one question that actually says that you feel you feel safe. safe. The bikers seem to feel safer than the golf cart As a cyclist, I feel safe riding my bike on Hot Springs Village trails. Okay, seventy-three point two seven percent said yes, and and uh, twenty-six point seven percent said no. <coughs> now, what, there's one here. What did this come out of the recreation committee? Or Came out of the recreation committee. Um, they had had, um, you know, maybe not everyone did receive this, but everyone that was interested in biking. <coughs> And this has been almost a year ago that it, that April. it started. April. Yeah. Well, no, the, the first meeting of all the bikers. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Not, how early. many total respondents oh, were there? Well, there, it, each question was different because people skipped it. What's the max? Yeah. Like I feel safe driving my car. The maximum hospital. number of people that responded. Well, it's, it's different. Out of 14,000 residents. Right. Yeah. So, they don't say you know, that. to say 73% thought something is a pretty small percentage of 14,000. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of the surveys get. They get that kind of attention. You know, that's one of the things that we face, uh, one of the challenges we face is that, believe it or not, we don't get a lot of feedback from the property owners as to specifics on what they want. We get a lot of complaining of what they don't want, but we don't get a lot of, I mean, I don't ever get emails giving me a solution for something. Or, boy, it'd really be nice if we had something like this. And back in the day, that's kind of how this village was built. And maybe that's a societal shift and we just don't have that anymore. But people kind of would get together and say, man, it'd be nice if we had da 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 da. Woodlands is a prime example of that. A performing arts place. Look what that has done for our village. Could you imagine having a village without the Woodlands? No. I mean, I couldn't. No. But there was a lot of work going on. But there was a lot, lot of, of, a lot of people. And now, I don't know how many of you play cards, but the Village Card Club is not just about bridge anymore. There's a lot of card games in there. There's Minocle and Euchre and Cribbage and I don't know, even more than that. And they're, they're fixing to have an open house there. I don't know the date on it off the top of my head. And, and you know, the, the, uh, that, that facility, the place itself is rented. Uh, the, village, the Bridge Club does have its own organization and its own treasurer and everything else. And they've got a long-term lease with the POA for that. <coughs> that section of the building because it's kind of two rooms because there's a divider running through there and the, the lease was a long term lease and it came up last year and it got renegotiated and as part of the renegotiation um, the POA is, has purchased um, new carpeting and new tables and chairs for them because their tables and chairs <coughs> were previously paid for by the Village Card Club and the um, tables now are going to be, um, and the chairs will be things that can be moved out because the POA might want to use that room for something, and that's part of the lease that they can use it for like four weekends a year. And you know, it's a give and take and that kind of thing. And but they're going to be open house there so that people can know about all the different card games that are there. And most of those card games are in the evenings. They are the pinochle and the. Uh, cribbage and, and that sort of thing, but it's a, that was created by the people themselves <laughs> is my point of talking about it versus waiting for the government to do it for you, which we're the government. Part of it. The dog park. People did the dog park. Yes, they took the initiative. Uh, people, yeah. people took the initiative. Yeah. Money. Yeah. People yeah. took the initiative for the pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. And even though the pickleball courts themselves were built by the POA, everything that's down there was done by the pickleball club. Everything was there. Mm -hmm. The benches, everything. So. Jerry? And what are your friends' names again, please? And just this is Kay and Jane. 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 Jane Wilson. Jane. Is this your first time to come to one of these? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, welcome. Jerry's good. We have Jerry. We have Jerry. I came on the first one, and then I thought it'd be good to let other people have a chance, you know, and I didn't know if they were. The first one was like a sellout crowd, and, and then, you know, sometimes interest waxes and wanes. But I'm oh, I like that. Yeah. Thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. My question has to do with um, the the CEO's report every month at the board meeting has a section in it about um, village homes and lands and discovery packages and how many have resulted in converting to a property owner and all that. And it's always a year to date number. And to me, it feels like we're patting ourselves on the back over and over for the same numbers. And so I looked back at uh, January this year, it was in there, not February, March it was, April it was, not May, not June, but July it was. And I, I kind of you know, was able to sort of reconstruct, but it would be nice to hear, instead of only the year to date number, the difference from the previous month. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, like I said, it feels to me like, you know, and we did this, and the next month, and we did that, remember? Don't forget we did that. And we're yeah. patting ourselves on the back over and over for the same thing. Yeah, uh, no doubt the reason that it's reported that way is that there's an overall goal for the year uh -huh. to have a certain number of, of discovery packages. Uh -huh. So month to month, if there's a zero, then that still doesn't mean that we're not going to make that target for the year, right? So. Uh, I don't know. We, we can mention it to uh, the CEO. It would be listed both ways. Yeah. 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 I mean, why not this many more goals? Um, and and that seems to be more realistic or more down to earth. Yeah. There you go. Okay. More down to earth. Okay. And you know, it's something that the board has to request of the CEO. So I'll say that Jerry wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
the, the percentage of people that were basically unknown that maybe didn't belong here was really quite small in comparison to the total number of people. Um, I know that people have been looking in, in windows of the beach, in the car windows at the beach to make sure do they have a do they have a day pass or do they have a sticker? That's at Balboa. At, at Balboa, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the thing. As far as tailgating into the gates, the Balboa gate is now people-wise, because we have cameras at all the gates. <coughs> if, you, if you see somebody, call the police because they can look at the film and possibly get these people to tailgate at. They found that they tailgated because they were a guest of a resident, or they were a resident without a card. So these people had a right to be here. There's another deal too. They found out that the Balboa Gate That's now has as many people coming in it, if not more, than the East Gate. Have they done a count on that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they're look, seriously looking at, and this will be part of his recommendation. Yeah, but it was of, part, of, part of her report. Right, so. of making and having a full-time uh, guard out there, just like the other, the other two games. A temporary housing. Right. I've been running into issues at the dance gate. Okay. Uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a tank truck on the inside of the gate as I was coming into the gate, in, uh, into the village. At the, at the gate, to wanting to get in was this big, what I would say is a log truck. It had those things that go way up. You know? mm -hmm. And it was, there was some kind of conversation going on between that driver and the driver of the tank truck on the other side of the gate. And then the driver got into the truck and almost backed over me. I honked on my horn, and then he got out and stood on the side of his truck and was motioning something. So I backed up, turned around, got out of that lane. He gets over, backs up, pulls over into the exit lane while the tank truck drives up and um, opens the gate, the exit gate, so he can go into the exit gate. Um, you know, um, yeah, but those kinds of things don't take matters into your own hands. Call the police. Call the police when you think that there's something wrong. Well, with I did, but I couldn't until I got home because my 911 wouldn't co work in my in my car. I don't know what that was about. But that was the first time. Second time, John and I were coming in. GPS the does tend to take people to those cases. Yes. That's right. They did that to me when I was new here, and I yeah, and I didn't well, have. We're any. always we're always going to be dealing. And you know, at one time. When I, even when I first moved here, that Danville gate was not available to property owners. It didn't that exist. Danville gate was a contract. Mm -hmm. Just like it, it is. There's another one that's like that. Yeah. That yes. GPS took us to one night right, right, in the right. middle of the night. Right. When it was dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that big, that big logging truck, the guy probably said to his trucking buddy, hey, I'm here to go get logging on the property. <laughs>
And so as we went through, he pulled right in behind us, and the gate couldn't close because he was so close on our tail. So that time we called the police right there. We stopped, and we just we just sat there and called the police. And that's exactly what the situation was people letting people in. Yes. Because they start backing traffic up, mm -hmm. and people get nervous, and they let them in. It's kind of like feeding the deer. Don't expect your plants to be well, there. Well, we've never it's solved like, this problem. This has been going on forever. Sometimes the gate personnel are busy, you know, talking with someone, verifying their need to come in, right. and other people just go through right. the other lane. And you know, at the at the east end, there's only one person. So ha you know, at the west gate, there's usually two people working. So one can be watching the people coming through the sticker line while the other person is checking in whoever doesn't have their sticker. But at the East Gate, you know, maybe there should be two people. So Sometimes there are. Sometimes there are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I go in, so my question revolves around what she said. I go in and out of that gate quite a bit. And I see it all the time where he's focused on one car and other people are just going in and they're not even looking at them. So you don't know if they're legitimately supposed to come in or not, or otherwise, um, sitting on his chair and he doesn't even get up and look. Right. And so I see this so often at the East Gate. And, and at the West Gate, I don't see this happening. Mm -hmm. I see it at the East Gate. Yeah. And so I'm really afraid for how many people. So so I was going to ask, so my question is, can we tighten up the security <coughs> at the East Gate? Well, because working they're working on it. And, and, and uh, believe yeah. me, if, if Middleton, Chief Middleton right. can do anything, he will. But he's been trying well, to the other, there. The other thing, too, that they're doing that you don't know about, the Public Works Department and the PLA are working with Google to change the settings, for, for, for Google to change the settings so you don't go to the, the right right. you go to send you to the right gate. I've had that happen with Ken folks. That's good. And it's, it's sometimes two or three in the morning, they're still trying to find where they're supposed to be. So that, that's being corrected, and it just takes time to, for Google to do it. And with another, one other thing. Instead of dialing 911, dial 9220011. They, the phone number is now in my phone. Okay. That's why the second time I'm going to Your cell phone, you, 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 you never know. Uh, if you know there's a routine. 920011. You know when. Say it again. Yes. The number. You know 9220011. That's not emergency <coughs> police department. <coughs> Yes. And the other thing is, when you call 911 on your cell phone, you don't get a local deal. I knew that. Sometimes yeah. they have, have to transfer you, and sometimes yeah, the call just drops. It bounces off of different towns. When can we expect the white paper from the chief? I believe very soon. I believe that he was going to have it out. I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. My next board meeting. And I assume he gets meeting. his direction from the the guidelines, the POA guidelines, and the he, he works under under uh, the CEO, but the, there are policies. But as far as in, enforce, I don't know what you're asking. Yeah, the, the policies are here. That doesn't mean they don't have to be revisited. It doesn't mean they don't have to be changed. I mean, if he recommended we change the policy, if that's what he comes to we work with, then we would we would certainly do it. Right. For for instance, you know. Hey, and I share our concerns that, you know, somebody might come to the gate and say, oh, I need to go to, you know, or reach the back, or I'm, or I'm to going church. to an estate center, <clears throat> yeah. or I'm going to church, and then they wind up at the beach, or mm -hmm. on the lake, or working in somebody's house, or, yeah, 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 um, we're, we're I mean, we're still an incredibly safe place to live, folks, we really are. I spoke to the chief about this issue. And he says, yes, there are people who get in who are supposed to be here. But that's generally not the group who are committing the crime. It's us. It's, 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 the, it's the, the kids that come back home that maybe shouldn't have a job somewhere, or they, they shouldn't be on drugs, or they should You know, it's, it, it's uh, I, we live, my husband and I live next door to the retired chief. Police, Leroy, and he says, he says all the outlaws are not, not outside the village. He says, you, you know, it's it's right here. In fact, there was a report for domestic violence today that, that was 
on next door. And I, I thought that was that was an interesting mm -hmm. thing. But that's right here, folks. That's, but we still have a very low crime rate in the village. Mm -hmm. really do the, do the police have the authority to issue a ticket, a, an actual fine that you have to pay? Yes. No. So all they, they can do, do that. No, no, they can no, do no, that. No, 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 no. They have now have the authority yeah. to issue a, issue a ticket that you have to pay. Not a traffic ticket. But they can get for speeding. They can do that, but we don't get money for it. We, but we don't get the money, but they will issue, they have started issuing tickets for speeding. Okay, I have the consequences of someone we don't do. The company tailgates in, and I call the police, give them the description, you know, and the route of the vehicle, and maybe even follow the vehicle. What are the consequences other than, well, you know, ma'am, you should use East Gate or West Gate and don't tailgate it. Well, there's probably so many things that go into the answer to that question. Like, yeah. do they volunteer? Do they forget their card? Are they a guest of someone and forgot their pass in the windshield and went to another gate that they didn't even know existed? You know, there's there's all kinds of questions to go with that. So what they do, they might just give a, give a warning <coughs> if it's somebody that actually belongs here and say, don't tailgate in. That's a, that is against our laws, yeah. tailgate. But if it's somebody, someone who doesn't belong here, what are the consequences? Well, mm -hmm. they probably will escort them. They'd be trust trust out. Out. They yeah. be escorted out. They'd be escorted out. And that's the end of it? They would yeah. be escorted out? They'd be trust no, 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 no. Well, it's like no, any no. other police officer mm -hmm. in any other municipality. You know, you got the, you got a, a, a you know, if the guy gave them attitude and acted, you know, da 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 da, they might run the plate and see if it's a if it's a legal car. They might they might you know there might be some other suspicion going on in that car that you know it, it would depend on that officer is a trained law enforcement officer under the state laws of Arkansas, so they would have the authority to to act under those laws. Okay. But we don't get any money for it. We'll go to the county if it's a, it's a ticket. I would say the Danville Road exit uh, gate this week has been manned. The two, uh, couple, I've been going for treatments in Hot Springs, so I'm going three times a week. And so twice I've been already this week. Both, both times there have been police at the gate. See, that's what they're doing as a yeah. reason. They know all this is going on, folks. They really do. So they read them. next door. <laughs> so they, 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 they know what's going on, and they, they know that there's a lot of complaints. So they're, they're really working at it. Yeah, we used to have all kinds of things in the police report about meth houses and drug things, things that were being uh, done. And we never see anything like that anymore. You can't tell me there aren't drugs in here. Um, we don't have anything to do with the police reports and the newspapers. Well, well call the police department <coughs> and ask to speak to the chief and ask him the question. Yeah, yeah. Now, he's I think that was a village voice, the, the police report. Well, but that comes from the police department. Yeah, well, that's selected too. That's not everything um, that's going on. I don't think, I mean, I don't know, but I, I don't think the, the I, I think that, you know, if you have something going on in your house, I'll just say to my husband, my husband, has a spat. I'm on the board. We have a spat. And, and you know, and I, I'm really mad at him. And, you know, I want him, beat him up. I want him to get calmed down, you know. She broke his foot just this week. <laughs> 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 well, what are the for you, Nancy? If I, had, if I call the police out to my house, don't you think I'm going to ask them to please... See, if you can keep the voice from putting this on the paper, I'd sure appreciate it. Because I really don't, I mean, for me sitting on the board, now maybe I need to let you guys know that my husband and I have fight and I have to call the police on it. But transparency. It's transparency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'm sure that there are instances where there are things that go on in people's homes where they ask the police not to put it, to try to keep it on the paper. <clears throat> And that may be going on with the drug situation. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm so, just sometimes when things are under investigation, um, also makes you not yeah. put it in the paper. Yeah, we've heard us say that in the past, but we haven't seen anything. Then that's the sense what that. is the future of a new gate system? If we are just going to continue having all of these issues, is there a possibility of there talk of going on and putting a new gate system on? And do you know that any kind of system, even what we were talking about before with IBM and getting the RFID readers, that still doesn't eliminate no. 
any of these problems that we still do. Like they, like they still that doesn't yeah. eliminate any, not one of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, other than the gate may close a little bit quicker on somebody, but that reader reads, instead of you putting your your card up there and a reader to let you in, instead you've got an RFID tag with their kind of a thick plastic like thing, and that's on your probably back glass and how, if you had a four door car, you know, on the, on the passenger back there glass so that it reads it and let you in and the gate opens, you know. So that's not going to prevent somebody from tailgating behind you because you're a car with an RFID reader on it versus you putting the pass out there. So what you're saying them all to be man gates. So what you're saying is there is there any community that has it worked out that you all know of? They're a lot smaller than we are if they do have their all smaller than us. And usually people have suggested people have suggested that somebody that doesn't live here or just wants to come in and go to a garage sale, take their driver's license and get, get it back to them when they leave. That's against the law. We can't do that. It's not no, but they, they can. Well, it's not. Or we could ask for 120 we, we, so could have, we could ask for their first born. You, we should be able to at least get their driver's license information. Scan it or something. Yeah, that yeah. should not be illegal. Right. That should right. be legal. Yeah. That's also, what they do. We in also will get a whole lot of trouble yeah. with the county and the state if we block seven or if we block five. So if cars are backed up all the way to seven, yeah, we're, we're in trouble. Well, maybe I could make uh, an understanding. When I'm in Dallas, and all of a sudden I get on another part of the freeway or something and all of a sudden I'm tagged automatically. Right. And all of a sudden I get a bill. Right. Mm -hmm. So couldn't we... Do you know the little specs of those systems? Like, no. <laughs> major, major, major. Yeah, but for Florida Turnpike, there would be a Florida full way somewhere. Yeah, take God. your picture, and then you get a bill three months later in California. Yeah. You go, what is that? Because then that is money. And they think and about they trip on the charges, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, going through them. Yeah. Has anybody else got any questions yeah. that uh, are different? I wanted to ask, and <laughs> you may have talked about this at another time, but um, so I wanted to ask about Balboa Golf Course mm -hmm. and when we might be working on Balboa Golf Course. And then the other Thing I wanted to mention as it relates to Balboa Golf Course is I think that there's irrigation issues over there, drainage, drainage issues. I think it's a beautiful course. There's drainage issues and there's hard path issues. Um, I'm not necessarily on board with the fact that we have to change the whole course or take out sand traps or, you know, but anyways, so I was wondering when we might be planning to do that because I know we've been talking about it for quite a few years. I, I think that we are going to be presented with some options possibly in September. Well, August or September. We, we have direct, I think it's yeah. fair to say that we have directed the staff to put that into the 2020 budget. It's been okay. kicked down the road long enough. Right. Okay. We're, we're ready, we're, it's we're, be done. we're ready okay. to deal with it. Okay. But, but the details are not, not ironed out. The details are not ironed out. But that will be at a board meeting and then we'll vote to implement that and and when we when we do that we are planning to have a community forum afternoon and evening session for people to come mm -hmm. and see what it is that we're budgeting to do and um, we are going to um, be as transparent as we can possibly be on this situation but it's time to deal with it and so, you know, we've got to figure out how to get the money. In just it. one second, there's a lovely lady in the back row. Back to Kay's question. She said, who's in charge of gate security? And you all said Ricky Middleton, right? The chief of police. Now, he is the one that decides who can come in here. He's not told who can come into our gates. There's policy. We've set the policy. <laughs> the, the policy is there. Um, now, Where is the policy? Where can I read it? You can it's online at explorethevillage.org. Let me see if I can um, It's a policy, not a bylaw. So my book's about ready to take off. You can tell. Looks like you've studied it a lot. Even all the don't have. So can we search under policy of the gates? 
safety policy, I'm pretty sure that's it. And as safety Diana policy. had mentioned, I'm sorry, um, buddy, but as Diana had mentioned earlier, he's going to do this white paper to give his recommendations and to give some facts and figures. Um, no, that's not it. Uh -uh. I think it's done. Look at Article 21. Um, Article 20, health and safety of employees, yeah, gas property yeah, owners, yeah. are utmost let's see. Yeah, it's possible that's working conditions. Um, policy. Um, and if policies need to be changed as a result of his recommendations, then they will be. Well, let me tell you why I, I, I asked this. Because I was in Walmart like a year ago, and the, the young guy in front of me was saying, well, he was going over to the village because he was going to an event, and there was going to be free food and fun. And he said to this other young guy, he said, come on, let's go. And the other guy said, well, I can't get in. He says, well, I can get you in. I know how to get in. But I'm he did, sure not, that he did not look like he belonged in the village. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before, but I, I don't know. But I know when we were in the military, we went into Hot Springs to buy furniture. They knew I was from the village. I, I don't know if I had it on my forehead. They saw the cigarettes in the car. Well, when I went to Balboa Beach on um, July the 4th, uh -huh. fireworks day, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. There were so many people there, we couldn't even get in. And I look over there, and there's a bus from Hot Springs. Uh, all kinds of people. How about this, folks? We're not going to solve. Obviously, the, the safety thing has been an issue for, it's been an issue probably for 45 or 50 years. Now, I'm not saying that that makes it right, that we don't have the answers today, but I, I think it's fair for us to say that, that everybody is aware of it and we're working on it. Here's traffic and, and, and we're going to, you know, we'll, we can deal with this problem today, but another balloon is going to pop up tomorrow, and then we'll work on that. It's going to be ongoing all the time, working on safety here. It just we're a gated community, surrounded by, you know, and everybody thinks that we're all rich. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got the lowest uh, net worth of anybody that's ever been on the board. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. Not sure about that. No, I'm not sure. Help that. me understand something. This is a this is a question because I I, I just. I want clarification. Okay. When I first moved here, we had volunteers manning the gates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. David Truman Twiggs comes along and David he. David Truman Twiggs. <laughs> is that his name? David Twiggs. Oh, I'm David sorry. Truman is from Crown. It's okay, Rocky. We give you a medal. It's okay. We all understand. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, this gentleman comes along and puts out contracts for the gates. Now, and again, this is I, I'm really trying to understand this. I'm not making a statement. But we all of a sudden started paying money to a contract company, and it appeared to me at the time, and again, I'm an outsider moving here, it appeared the gates were working real good. And then we had these contracts come in, and it seems like things appeared to start changing. Well, they weren't volunteers. First of all, they weren't volunteers. Well, that's they what I want to understand. They, they were paid employees okay. so of the POA. But we had we had volunteers, but the volunteers that we had were uh, people that assisted with filling out the passes, okay, the date that it's going to expire, and assisted with taking the telephone calls when you would call in to say, hey, I've got, um, you know, my friend is going to be coming in on Wednesday, da 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 da, and they took down that information. But weren't most of the workers villagers? Most of the workers were villagers. Not they were employees. But they were employees. But they were villagers. So, a so study so was, was right now, but they don't know the village like villagers do. Well, to but the, a, show people that's not our own there. A study was done, mm -hmm. and the board at the time, 
and I don't believe we've studied it since. We haven't studied it since I've been on the board anyway, uh, which is a very, very short period of time. Um, a study was done to, to determine whether or not it was more cost effective for, for us to contract that out or to keep these employees in house with the, you know, all, you know, you don't just have hourly employee expenses when you have employees. You, you've got all the employment expenses that go along with that. And was it more beneficial? And the answer to that, and that board decided that yes, it is more beneficial. So we're going to contract that out, which is done by companies all the time. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's the, the route that we chose to do. But these problems that we are discussing here tonight, I'm telling you, yeah. have been going on since Aught One. Okay. See, I never knew that those were employees before. And yes. I was always under the impression that they were volunteers. And remember, there was, said time, some were there was some a time when, not too many long years ago, because when I first, I've been here 16 years, and well, I've been a property owner since 97. And when we were coming down here from Illinois, we'd come down five and then have to go up seven and come into West Gate to get in here because there was no East Gate. So if there, there was some volunteers and they were assisting and filling out the cars and things like that, yeah, so were, maybe that helped the, the uh, security people be more effective. Like the situation that I'm seeing at the East Gate, where the person, he can't do, you know, four things at once, and so people are just, so, you know, so yeah, in that situation, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe the volunteers can make that person more effective, and it doesn't cost any more money. Now you can, you know, call your guest in, or put them on But the you can do all that online yeah. now. We yeah. can use, right. not be able to do that online. Right. But it, right. it did turn out to be less expensive, mm -hmm. because yeah. the company pays the workman's yeah. comp. The company mm -hmm. takes care of the health insurance company takes care of any kind of a pension plan that these people might have. If not, it was the village that took care of that. Okay, so that was, it was a, it was a, a sound financial decision at the time. It wasn't to, to put these poor ambassadors in the village of volunteers out of a, out of a job. It was an issue that existed with the volunteers. They would consider themselves volunteer. So if Companies coming. I'm not volunteering that day. I'm going to be with. And they company. didn't show up. Yeah. They didn't show. They didn't call. Yeah. So scheduling was a nightmare. <coughs> and yeah. that's why employees have to be yeah. put in there. I mean, it's real them. hard to fire a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> it's real hard. They, they fire them. themselves. I don't do computer stuff. Yeah. Right. I don't want to have to. You're right. <laughs> Terry? Uh, yes, uh, just a couple of uh, brief questions here. Uh, number one, um, uh, Nancy and, and Buddy, uh, you probably remember about eight months ago, I handed the deal out at the board on uh, salary grade job descriptions dating back to 2004, mm -hmm. which I thought was great transparency by the village up until 2013 and it discontinued. Um, I, I understand the court ruling and everything. It looks like we're probably going to have something back out there. I'm not interested if somebody's making 150000 for this. I like the idea of salary grades, job description, and the range that that goes in. That's exactly that what you're fixing to get. Yeah, well, that's, get that it. makes sense to go back to that. Is it's never get away. it up right now, and it takes a little time to I do the math for it, is the... Um, Minimum wage. Minimum wage. It's, it's got to be affected for the next three years. It goes up so much. All of that has got to be put in that before they can publish that paper. But they are working on it. In fact, we talked about that today. We did. I wish we would have uh, sat down and been able to iron this out before Cooper took us in, but that's another story. So. Well, uh, it, it, it's a done deal now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, We've been working diligently to try to put some sort of a procedure right. in place. We've got a lot of policy work to do as a result of it because we've got to make the policies adhere to the ruling. Okay. So, yeah. Just one other point. I've been here since 2000, and uh, the amenities in this village are great. 
and we have so many. When we have a financial situation like we have, it, I know it's not great, and we all know we need $110 a month, just like the people that came in as consultants said, that we're going to have a problem in 10 years. That's the reason I just keep saying on amenities, take care of what we have, maintain them, and don't worry about somebody that comes up in the committee and says, I want something a little new. we got to put an end to that, and the board needs to, I don't know if it's board or Leslie or who has to draw the line and say, enough's enough, this is a great place to come, we're offering so much, and we ought to be satisfied. Well, what happens, and I remember when you came up, I think it was kayak lunches or something. Oh, yes. That was the situation. Um, and you came to the recreation meeting. Um, you can't blame somebody for trying, and that's that's what that is. It's ultimately up to the board. If that sneaks its way into the budget, will we have the right to approve or disapprove of, of the budget? Mm -hmm. Now that's probably not something. If it's a fifty dollar pile of rocks to make a or sand or whatever to make a kayak mm -hmm. launch, we're probably not going to not approve that. You know, um, but but it's up to the board to approve those things. But it starts at the committee level, and, and honestly, like I said, you can't blame them. If um, somebody came in and wanted, they just moved here, they said, boy, do you have a croquet field? <laughs> and we're going, well, no. <laughs> Actually, that's one thing we don't have. But boy, that would be a piece of cake. Have you got your own wickets and your own mallets? Sure. Okay, well, we'll, we'll mow a spot for you. And that's really all you need for a croquet Well, maybe field. the board needs to step that's forward and put it in print, in the paper, and say, this is where we're at financially. This is what we have for amenities. And right now, we're freezing things. Yeah. What's wrong with that? It's kind of freezing wages. I've been through that. Right. If you don't, if something isn't working, you freeze it. We, we aren't right at this point planning any new amenities. I, I mean, we're trying to keep, take care of what we've got. Yeah, well, that's good. I've heard of, I've heard of, no, in any of our budget <coughs> discussions, mm -hmm. preparing for 2020, I've heard of no new amenities. Our, our main focus in 2020 is the Balboa Golf Course. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that's, that's our amenity focus in 2020. And we think of that as deferred maintenance, folks. We don't think of it as something new. It's deferred maintenance. Because not already there, absolutely nothing has been done to that golf course in the 40 years that it's been here. Absolutely. Will anything be done to the clubhouse? Uh, that part of it, that or part of the presentation that we'll get and to make a decision on. Back to the minimum wage. It's already been decided that people who are currently at the minimum wage will get a, a 75 cent increase. We are not going to get an increased benefit. We're going to spend more money paying people, but we're not going to get anything forward so it's an expense right. but but nothing new coming in so pretend you are getting ten dollars an hour well wish <laughs> this, this guy comes in in january 1st minimum wage is now ten dollars an hour well wait, wait. I, I know what you're going to say and that's part of the dilemma with our grading is that I'd like to hear the rest no, of the yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll let you. <laughs> he comes in, he has no experience doing whatever it is your job was. Well, I never liked him. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he gets the same amount of money that you do. Or more. You were now really pissed off. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, this is not fair. Yes. He doesn't know how. I've been really good, and how does he come in equal to or higher than me just because somebody raised the minimum? So now, ballot box. now you say, this is not fair. I want an increase also because this is not fair. Mm -hmm. How do you budget this stuff? Well, see, that's that's part of what's been going on. We, I mean, We've been in existence for 50 years. Well, there were inequalities, possibly, in, in some of the pay levels. People have been here for years and years and years, and they maybe they were, whatever, let's say they were grade five. 
Well, they, they maxed out of that grade long, long time before. So what do you what do you do? Change right. their title. That's it. That, well, see, that's that's what we want. That's that that's, that's what happens. Yeah. But but that's part of part of this adjustment is that there's a like he said there's a little bit of math involved with this because some people actually need to be brought up to even get to that point, mm -hmm. and other people probably won't. <laughs> I, I, I have to address my philosophy on this because I'm going to this one. I would have been so disappointed. Yeah, you would have been so And, you know, I am a tight account. What can I say? I am what I am. And I do not, I'm a humanitarian too. But you don't get more money just because you do the same job and you've been there for 10 or 15 years. You advance yourself because you can get better, uh, move up the ranks, if you will. But I don't believe, and I don't believe that Leslie, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but based on my emailing with Leslie, that just because we're having a minimum ra wage increase the next several years, that all of our jobs are going up, you know, that, that, that's not, I don't think that's going to happen. But here's the other challenge that we have in regards to our wages here. <clears throat> Part of us lies within Garland County, which is going to boom. It's already booming. You talk to any builders going down there and that kind of thing, and I mean, a lot of speculation going on and land investment and people spending, I mean, the prices in downtown for those old buildings that need asbestos removed and I mean you know we're going to be hurting probably to get workers out here. Our police force is already five people down. Well there's a reason. They're down because you know the competition is very very tight to fill those jobs. So that weighs into the budget too, and that is a big um, hurdle and a big, I don't want to call it a problem, but it, it's an opportunity for our operations people and our management staff as how they're going to deal with that. And they recognize it, but that's not for the board to decide how they're going to deal with it. We, we give them, we want this done, that done, you figure out how you're going to do it and how much it's going to cost us and see if we can Go with the program. We now do do the budget, right? No, no, a lot. We approve the, we budget. Approve the budget, and, and you will be able to participate. Uh, we have set the date, but not the times. Uh, that last weekend, week of uh, September, uh, that we will be di doing divisional budget presentations or department. I think it's at the division level, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Departmental. Departmental. And you can, will be able to come to that. We don't know exactly what time or what or what um, where, mm -hmm. but um, um, you'll be able to hear those presentations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and there generally is a question and answer afterwards. Also, yeah. there was a Coronado Center last last year in two half days. <coughs> and we're looking at three half days this year. Right. What so are the dates? Yeah. We don't know yet. Well, no, no, no. September the thirtieth to October. The we're, we're hoping it will be announced. It, it will be announced, but tentatively, tentatively, it is scheduled for uh, September sixth. Well, we tentatively scheduled it actually for October for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, October first, second, and third is what we tentatively scheduled it for. Because we will, as a board, get, that's what Liz said today, uh, we will get a first stab at this budget at our board meeting in September, which is on September 18th, okay? Then we'll go in and do these departmental, divisional, lower level budget presentations uh, in that first week, and then we are have the onus to approve that budget mm -hmm. at our October board meeting. If you want to jump on that, start going to committee meetings because the committees discuss <coughs> things. Um, I, you've gone to recreation, Stacy's especially good. She'll go over four or five times because she really gets her committee's input as to their priorities. 
Not that that's the way it's going to end up, but, but at least and there's and input and from the public from the works. Place. Jason has already, I mean, he's been working and all of them have ongoing, yeah. but well, the culverts, we've been talking about the culverts at a lot of right. different meetings. Right. And so the plan is, is easy, he's working on his plan for the, they've identified which culverts are, if you want to prioritize them A, B, and C, and we got to do with the A's right. first. You know, he's, he's prioritizing those and, and how much of that to put into next year's budget. Mm -hmm. It's up. It'll be out there. It'll be part of that. Yeah. But this is a committee. Uh, this is a committee meeting, and you can go online and find out when they are, and you'll see the, how, how thorough they are and how, how many times they go through this stuff. So you really have a good idea of what they're trying to get in the overall budget. And if you have any interest in getting any kind of involvement in uh, uh, local and even state being on, uh, knowledgeable about local and state uh, government proceedings. We have had an ongoing opening in our government affairs committee for a number of months now. Well, in fact, they had a lot of them that got for the pending interview. Now they're trying to do it. Well, I thought that they just came out, but they still were looking for. They for, have. Yeah, we just approved two of them. So. The last one. I thought that was still coming out, but we still needed another government affairs committee. Yeah, Are there any other questions, Kathy? Okay, there was a bump on DeSoto that they fixed, but there are five or six bumps on Fresno that are horrible. Uh -huh. That's right. And nobody's ever done anything about them. They tried. Those were covert repairs. Yeah. Yep. They did a terrible job. Right. Um, and that's that's uh, you know that's they're looking at that a little bit better. They've got. Of the correct roller type equipment to to firm up that gravel. Well, at least they will fix it because the they, they've are tried to fix it, but it isn't fixed. There's still bumps. I know, but they don't seem to be going back doing anything about it. Well, they, they can. travel well, them all the time. You can tell by the patchwork that they do travel them all the time, though. I mean, the bumps are awful. I know I do travel it all the time. I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, and they will be fixing those. Uh, but that was covert repair. And uh, it was kind of the cart before the horse because they had they had resurfaced that road, uh, put the stripings on it and the reflectors, and then everything with the culverts sunk. So okay. Did you determine the uh, policy number or whatever? For okay. No, I didn't. I didn't because I never can find one when I'm looking like that. I'll, I'll let Jerry know. Or you can go online and do a little light reading. There's I'll, I'll probably seven. go online and look for it. Okay. You know, okay. Well, okay. I'll, 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 I'll see if we'll stop <laughs> race you. See who finds it first. <laughs> well, I'm not going to look tonight. How's oh, that? Okay. okay. So you might win. Yeah. It's a hay open Pandora's box. I'd like to get it further open. Um, <coughs> I, I have an issue with seven people being able to change our governing uh, Thank you. Yes, thank you. <coughs> the governing documents. And um, normally, bylaws are something that are not easily changed. They are things that are there for a very specific reason and have been in place for a very long time. Normally, it takes like more than a simple majority of members to change bylaws in most organizations. Our bylaws have been, but that's, that's what we do. We're governors. Right? Change, the, change the bylaws. We cannot, we can change the articles of incorporation. We cannot change the declaration without a membership vote. Right, okay. And had your folks voted in the 1993 nonprofit articles of incorporation, we wouldn't be able to change those without a member vote. But you didn't, so we can change those. We can change the bylaws, we can change the policies. That's what we do. We're, we're given that authority to change those to correct them. Times change, things change. You need to do that. But seven people make well, such I mean, a radical I mean, change. You voted <coughs> us in to be your governing body. I mean, yeah. We're, We're due, legislators. Due to the lawsuit and, and 
because then it would have made it much easier to deal with because then you know a property owner is a property owner. That's the name that's on the deed is the property owner. Right, right. And so, you know. And that's what the declaration says. Let me read you the sentence. First, second sentence in this summary of undisputed facts. All books and records of a corporation may be inspected by any member for any proper purpose at any reasonable time. What is proper? That's the problem. That's the problem. That is a little bit of a problem. Is the proper purpose that I need to get everybody's email so I can send them an electronic Christmas card? Yeah. Do you have to make that determination? Yeah. Do you have to make that determination yourself? Yes, we will. 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 Y
it's going to be posted. They really shouldn't. Of course they shouldn't. But it should Is that a proper secret. purpose? If they send it all over the World Wide Web, right. way out of the village? Well, I, let's be on the I'm not. I'm <laughs> going and, and giving you guys any of my time for this information. But no, we're not going to put it in the paper. If, if you want this information, this is the process you're going to have to go through. But is that what the judge, I'm just curious, and the judge said you need to, to yes. put this information and, out, isn't that what okay. he said? If, if you want to come in and, and copy every so financial record same. we've got, you have to bring your own copy, your, your own scan, I read all your that. own yeah. That's what the judge said in that sure. ruling. Okay. But you could just take your camera too and take a picture. Sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. We but can do that. Leslie has already had three or four appointments where people have come in. Her her contract is, is on her little conference room table. So, so anybody can go. You have to make an appointment. And that's it. Yeah. Yes. Proper and proper forms. Fill out an app. Fill out one. And the, the form is on the website. You can and you can print the form form off and fill it out and take it in. I mean, honestly, uh, uh, John Cooper was given 65 banker's boxes of financials. According to our policy, it was to inspect those. Well, now, I totally agree, and the judge even said it. Boy, it's really hard to inspect 65 boxes of paper in a conference room and, and not be able to write anything down or taking pictures of copying anything. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Monica. You're welcome. Um, so, uh, if you want 65 bankers' boxes and financials, it might take us a little while to pull it together. Okay, now for CEO contract, you're going to have to be specific on what you want to see. Yeah, you have to indicate what you want. Yeah. Sure. I've never gone down and uh, signed in to look at anything like a true contract or anything. Uh, I could have, but what I want to know is if you go down there and let's say you look at something, do I have to sign that I will not even talk to my neighbor about it? Um, that was a question that we'd asked the attorney if, if uh, the non-disclosure agreements yeah. with what used to be signed to look at a contract. Uh, that is, is a interesting thing it depends on the contract if, if the, the person that we have a contract with has has a confidentiality agreement then it gets a little bit brighter okay. but other contracts yeah but if it's going to harm the village see that's another thing and you all read that in the email harming the village and that's that's what you have to determine also how does it harm the village how does what harm the village anything harm the village how does anything harm the village? Yes, I mean, if you have uh, information and you get it out financially, okay, we all know it, there's no secrets, and then everybody is settled down and they, it, it, it doesn't matter anymore. Why? Diana right. brought up a good example earlier when, she was, when we were talking about pocket neighborhoods. Right. Okay. Let's say we want to acquire two more lots to have an appropriate number of lots for a, develop, a builder who wants to come in and put this pocket neighborhood there. And, and it's public knowledge where he's going to do this and where those two lots are. Kathy all of a sudden owns one of those lots and she says, yeah. woohoo, I just made a million dollars. Yeah. Okay? That harms the village. With that type of thing, but I think what Linda's referring to here is employment information. She's not referring to business plans. Well, that no, is all we're not. talking about, though. Yeah. No, I'm we're, not. We're talking about I'm only contracts. referring to financials, which I have always, always considered as important for, like, a, a finance committee to know what is going on, who is being paid, what is expended, expenses, and how it's just a part of the big picture that I think that Mr. Cooper was looking for. Finance, just what the finance the CEO contract. I don't think you can answer that. Down there. It's no, I'm well, sorry. That's, that's what it, that's what it no. sounds. He's asking for books and records and, and names and addresses and there's more to it there than just the CEO contract. Those I'm sorry. Those are specifics that he wasn't getting. I understand that, but he asked for for the books, the records, the names, the addresses, the email addresses, the phone numbers. There was more than just the CEO contract right. there. And but. 
lost my train of thought. Uh, finance records, mm -hmm. what I was going to say to you, Correct. Linda, is that your financials, all of your <coughs> financial reporting is things that have already taken place. It's, it's, it's history. Correct. It's reporting of history. So that's not revealing plans. There's a difference between, we don't want to reveal plans because that brings harm to us. Futures. Potential. Future plans, future potentials, because that, that could harm us. That could harm every one of us in here. It could it could devalue our property. It could, uh, if we were a potential buyer, it could cause us to, to cut people out of moving here because of an escalation in properties, you know, speculation, that kind of thing. So you, you have to be very careful with what you reveal for future plans. But reviewing our financial documentation is a review of what happened. Where did we spend our money? So that's not a problem releasing that. It's never been a problem releasing that. You can go back a, 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 a very long period of time and find those on our website, okay? I mean, they're there. Now, if somebody doesn't do things on the web, they can come down to the PO and Tom, I'll give you an example. I, I don't know if I should say a name, but somebody came in and wanted to know about golf fees more than a decade ago. Now, I guess they're going to put together some kind of study, and if it's going to be of help to us, great, because we certainly don't have time to do all of these things that people have ideas for, you know, and it, it might help us. But he came down, and they found the information, and he took a picture of it. So he has it for whatever he's going to do with it. No, I, 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 I really appreciate it when you were at the meeting and you had said, let's do an accrual basis year from year and decide how, where are we going financially? Because in, in the consideration of things, I had a, con a conversation with one of my sisters who owns two corporations, and she had said, no one can understand the financial stability of where we are in the community unless you have p possibly a finance committee who could lay it all out and say, hey, everything's fine. That's all of our consideration. That's all we want to know, that things are taken care of. We don't have to worry anymore. But when we are having expenses, and huge ones, million, half, two million, for the, or you know, getting up to 1.5 or spending 500,000 or whatever it is, we don't know what's going on. It's the confusion and not understanding. And that's why I had always thought a finance committee could maybe make that simpler so that we can understand that everything can go away. We don't have to worry anymore. Well, that's, that's not the reference issue, but we're working on that too. Sure. Is our PLA office not computerized? Is what? No, the right. Okay. So um, I'm assuming, and maybe I'm assuming wrong, that the recent records, maybe not the ones in the beginning, they may not have been ever. No, we didn't digitize. Right. Them. Right. I mean, there's a way to do it, but it's time consuming. It's a lot of work. But the records now, why can't they be made available electronically? Now I know the judge didn't put that in his ruling because he couldn't. But he said it would be nice if the POA did that. Why is the POA not making them available electronically? Well, what are you talking about, Cheryl? Are you they could email about? us um, an attachment. They're all in. They're all PDFs. Very easy. Okay. To so, do. so what kind of exposure to me to a member? I mean, I'm not asking for anything. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, if okay. I was, if I wanted a okay. Uh, so, that today so it's and it's the today. decimation of it. What do you mean? Well, what Where am I doing with that when I go? get it on my computer? You know, how much of well, I is seminating? If I go in there with a copier, I can put it on my computer anyway. You could. Right, very easily. If I go in there with a copier, well, I go home and put it on my computer. That's fine, but we, we did discuss that today, and that's something that we really were thinking we would not do. Mm -hmm. It would not transmit electronically. That seems to make um, to be an intent to make it more difficult for people. And yeah. I'm not saying more difficult for me because I'm not asking for anything. 
if I understand what you're saying is that um, it it seemed to me when I read the judge's ruling that it would just be get posted at the POA building and if you wanted to walk in and see it on the wall then walk out and you were done. <laughs> that, that, that is how I thought it would be handled and, and so I also was surprised that there was a little bit more hoop jumping to be done in order for people to get the information they've been asking for for a long time. We've got a $35 million plus budget and we've been in existence for 50 years. I don't care about 50 years. I just want to know. It's just like we just can't post everything on the wall, is what I'm saying. And everybody wants something different. Like she said, this gentleman wanted the fees for golf. He wanted to compare the fees of golf and gone up over the years or whatever he wanted to do. Somebody else wants something else. Yeah, I don't mean for, you know, all the... But there's been a lightning rod. You've got to admit, there's been a lightning rod. And that is Leslie's contract. Mm -hmm. But you why not? It's yes. right there on her, on her I, I know, but instead of making people jump through do. hoops to do it, why not just post it in the POA building and if people want to go see it, go see it? All you got to do is call and make an appointment make and see it. Hey, so, I'm just okay. down. Okay. Right. I'm okay. waiting. I've already been there. So well, well, that isn't exactly what she wants. Well, I, I want more uh, than that. You want more than that. Right. So they're they're looking at, at your request. So I, you know, I'm not coming. Okay, so there's people mm -hmm. wanting. Uh, additional. I right. certainly I get it. Right. Certainly. Okay. But you can you can call, make an appointment. That contract and and her salary is available. If she's actually using her conference room off of her office so that you can review it, take a picture of it, do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, I just want to get research for myself and not listen to the rumor mill. Well, and that's that's that is why. That's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we would have appealed this case, it would have been a partial appeal, and it would have been appealed because of the members' names, addresses, and emails. It would not have been because of Leslie's uh, salary package. But I don't understand why you all have to go through. Why can't we just come look at it and go through it ourselves? What do you mean, go through it yourself? Go with through it. We, we can. can. We can. We can. can. Go can. Go it but you all are going through. No, it's in her conference room. It's in her conference room. You can't take it out of the building. Yeah. They have okay, that. you can take a picture of it. But I have to fill out a paper and be approved. You have to what? Fill out a paper and be approved. Because you need a proper purpose. I'm just a gentle lady here who wants to test for the village. It's up to us to Here's a copy of the form you have to fill out. It's not a big deal. And no. it's on the website. You can print it off. You can have this one. No, I got notes no, on the back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, a, and you just take it down and you can turn it in. And they all. And, and, and well, this. what are you all going through then? What are you? No, all no, going no, 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 no. They, no, no. Maybe no. somebody wants wants fifty years worth of financial records that they can't find on on the explorevillage dot com because that's part of the ruling too. Is it or part of part of our process? Is if if you if this is readily available already, you can make copies of it off of explorevillage dot com, right? If it's readily available that way. But there's any number of things that people want. I, I think somebody wanted to come in and see the line item on the budget, right? Yeah, they Which came in. What, what twenty five hundred? They came in and they started looking at it. And after about an hour or so, they okay, thanks. And we got a lot of stuff here. See ya. I think, I, I think what the she time might be asking one. is. Are you going to do a background check? On no. The, oh, no. Um, well, well, let me read this. Is very simple. It says one. <laughs> By submitting this request, I acknowledge the following. I'm a member of HSVOPOA, as defined in Article 3, Section 1 of the Association's Declaration. I have determined that the information requested is not readily available on the associate member website. I am seeking access to these records for my own knowledge of association affairs. I will not make these records available to those who are not members of the HSDPOA. I will not use the information to harm the association or others. Then it says, request information, the date, your name, your signature, your property address, your property member number, 
And then it says, information requested. What is it you're asking for? The purpose of your request. What are you asking that information for? And then preferred dates of inspection. And then you'll then call you, make an appointment, and you have what you're doing. That's so but, is but can you imagine if we had 400 people to go up there tomorrow and stand in the front door and want, yeah. want this? I mean, the, the POA can't handle it. You want to know. So you want to know. The purpose is how are our assessment dollars spent. That's all it is. How do you expect to be able to police that? I mean, well, if I can walk in here with my, my smartphone, take a picture of this, I think you'll be out of the net before I get out the door. Well, obviously. So how do you really, how do you really, how do you really You're very right. That? You're very right. I, you know, I think this, what you call it, something special purpose, what's the term you use? Proper. Proper, pro proper purpose, all right? That's all. That's the judge's word. When it comes down to the real world, you know, that doesn't mean it'll be there. Well, you're absolutely right. Policing it would only come if there is harm to the association or repercussions down the road, or we happen to see it somewhere. Is somebody going to get arrested? We wouldn't have legal recourse. We wouldn't have legal recourse. We wouldn't have legal liable for something because it leaked out. We wouldn't have legal recourse. If you say it's going to be used for one thing and you do something else with it. And we find out, or it just is discovered, we would have legal recourse. It's 830. It's 830. Boy, she just got her question. No, not the one I asked for before. I just would like to know, what is the thinking? Because so much of this stuff is available on the web already, and you say if it's not readily available there, then we'll look at getting it for you if we've got it. What's the thinking about not being willing to disseminate it electronically when the bulk of it already is? Well, the bulk of it that is out there is, that's transparency. I mean, I don't know. So why, if someone has a different request, why not transmit it to them electronically? It would depend on the request, but we have discussed that. And again, do you folks want to hire additional staff to take care of these requests? Well, I'm just asking what the thinking is. Why is there the difference? We don't want it to cost us money to provide this information. We don't want to instill extra expense to provide it. It doesn't take money. Once I fill out the form, they can fill it in. Once I fill out the form, they can fill it in. They can decide whether I can do it. It will be staff. It will be HR director. It depends on what the, and I believe that was on the e-blast. If you want to see some financial records, it would be the CFO. I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you. I have one question. Can we send that form in electronically? Or do we have to bring it in? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Thank you.